Wow. Good, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome uh, to be here on this great day. My name is Tim Houston. I'm the MLA for Pictou East. Uh, I'm also the... Uh, thank you. I'm the uh, leader of the Nova Scotia Progressive Conservative Party, and I have to tell you, thank you. <clears throat> I could not be more proud to be here today to support my friends, my mentor, Peter McKay, as we together launch his campaign for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. <clears throat> Peter, Peter has the uh, experience, the personality, uh, the values to be our next Prime Minister, and I can't wait. <laughs> Peter, is, uh, Peter is proven. He's proven. He's dedicated much of his life to serving our province, to serving our country. And he has represented us so well, so many times on the international stage. <clears throat> now, I have to tell you, I never thought that four little words could excite me so much. <laughs> but when I saw those four little words, I'm in, stay tuned, I got pretty excited. I got pretty excited, and I know we all were pretty excited when we saw those words, but I know that there was uh, 10 Nova Scotians that were a little worried to see those words. 10 Liberal members of Parliament in Nova Scotia must have been pretty worried to see those words. <clears throat> Because they know what we know, and with Peter McKay as leader, their job is in jeopardy when the next election comes. <clears throat> and I know somebody else that must have been afraid to see those four little words. Justin Trudeau. Do you think that Justin Trudeau wants to see Peter McKay as the leader of the Conservative Party? I don't think Justin Trudeau wants to see that. Because Justin Trudeau, like all of us, and like so many Canadians, know that Peter is the person that can unite this country. Uh, Peter is the person that can drive this country forward, drive our economy, get this country going. Peter is the person who can take the Conservative Party to the next government. Peter is the next Prime Minister of Canada. <clears throat> but we need your help. We need, we need your help. But with your help and with your support, I know that we can, we can help Peter become that Prime Minister that this country deserves. And I can't wait to do it. I'm here for everything, and I know you guys are as well. So thank you for being here this morning. I'm so happy to uh, be joined by some of my uh, provincial caucus colleagues. I saw Barbara Adams over there. Thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> uh, Steve Craig. Steve Craig is here. Or Steve's over there, my caucus colleague. This is a very, very, very distinguished crowd. Thank you for being part of it. So many municipal representatives here, so many uh, provincial representatives from Nova Scotia and PEI and beyond. Uh, former premiers are here. Uh, Kathy Dunnerdale from Newfoundland is here. Thank you for joining us this morning. <clears throat> John Hamm is here, former premier of Nova Scotia. Thank you, John, for your service. And, uh, and of course, my caucus colleague, uh, Carl McFarlane, the MLA for Picto West is here. Carl, please join me on stage. Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour, mes amis. 
What a great way to start a Saturday morning here at the Museum of Industry in Central Nova with so many friendly faces from around this great province and beyond. Though some of you might be thinking, there aren't many reasons to venture out on these cold days. Today, there certainly is a great reason. That is why I am so very honored to be here with you and to introduce a colleague and a friend to all of us. We were so very proud to have him represent us in Parliament. While carrying out his duties as a senior cabinet minister with critical roles in foreign affairs, defense, and justice. We watched with joy as he went on to become a terrific husband to Nazanin and a father to three beautiful children. With vision, character, kindness, a strong sense of compassion, and as well, great intellect, he possesses many of the qualities of true leadership. He united our conservative family as a co-founder of the party in 2003, and will continue to unite and build the Conservative Party of Canada moving forward from coast to coast to coast. He is the person who can defeat the current Prime Minister and deliver Canadians a Conservative government. Everyone, please give a big Pictou County welcome to our friend, the next leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, Peter McKay. Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's great to be home with all of you. Feels a little bit like a maritime kitchen party here this morning, doesn't it? And thank you to George and Tim and Carla, and uh, thank you to everyone. Over four years ago, I stood in this very room with family and friends, including Prime Minister Harper and many of you who are here again today, and announced that I would be leaving politics. It was a tough decision. After dedicating most of my working life to public service, I felt it was time to step back and focus on my growing family. Il y a plus que quatre ans, j'ai quitté les politiques pour passer plus de temps avec ma famille, avec mes enfants. I recently spoke with uh, my son, Keon, who's six, about my decision to run. And I explained to him that uh, this was a race, it was a competition that I hoped to win. And he said, well, Dad, I I'd vote for you, but I don't know who else is running. <laughs> I 
I didn't know. I didn't know then that I'd be standing before you today making this announcement. And I wouldn't dream of doing so without the complete love and support of Nazanin and my entire family, many here today. Je ne savais pas que j'allais être ici devant vous aujourd'hui pour faire cette annonce, et jamais je n'aurais pu le faire sans l'amour et l'appui de mon famille. We're here today in the Museum of Industry, here in Stellarton, Nova Scotia, a place that celebrates the significant contribution of hard-working initiative, hard-working Canadians who sacrificed greatly for their community, their family, and their country. And that's important. It also feels right, for almost 23 years ago, I began my journey in politics right here. History and roots matter. People came here to this place from across oceans seeking a better life for them and their families. And through hard work, sometimes treacherous toil, through sweat of brow, strength of back, this country was built by that dream. The dream that here in Canada, no matter where you come from, fleeing persecution, poverty, war or famine, you can have a better life for yourself and for your family. From waves of family, from Scotland, Ireland, France and England, more recently Afghans and Syrians, from people from every place on this planet, this country was built by our First Nations and immigrants. It was fortified by those who fled oppression in search of freedom and opportunity. Pictou County was settled primarily by Highland Scots, and I think of them today, particularly this being Robbie Burns Day. Burns famously said, oh, the gift that God could give us to see ourselves as others see us. Politicians take heed. <laughs> Ours is a great country. But while you are working hard and working harder for your families, your government is squandering opportunities. And those of you who know me know that there's something that my parents instilled in me at a very young age, like so many Canadian parents. You can't pass by a person in trouble or turn a blind eye. If you believe you can help, if you have something to do, be a good Samaritan, whether it be a neighbor or a stranger. It's the people who built this country. People who work hard, who take initiative, who know that the fruits of success are there to harvest if you keep on with determination. Ce sont les gens qui ont bâti ce pays. Ils ont travaillé très fort. Ils ont foncé. Ils savaient que pour récolter du succès, se prendre de la détermination. It's people, it's their dreams, it's your dream. And that's why I'm standing here today, again, to announce my candidacy for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. Ce sont les gens, ce sont leurs rêves, c'est votre rêve, et c'est pourquoi je suis ici devant vous pour vous annoncer que je serai candidate à la chefferie du Parti conservateur du Canada. We have a government right now that believes the more you succeed, the more you should be held down and tied up with regulation and bureaucratic red tape, and taxed to the hilt. And the more your children and grandchildren will be indebted. À ce moment, nous avons un gouvernement qui pensait que plus vous avez de succès et plus grands sont vos rêves, plus de droits vous retenir et vous limiter par le règlement, la bureaucratie est plus lourde et leurs taxes, leurs résultats et une plus grande dette of vos enfants et petits enfants. This government pits city against country. 
industry against industry, region against region. As conservatives, we have a different vision for government. We believe in a government that doesn't just get out of your way. It removes, it removes barriers and clears the way for growth and success. There is so much to be inspired by in this country, our athletes, artists, academics, among others. This is a country of doers, of builders, of heavy lifters, of winners. Canada's strong because Canadians make it strong. Canada's free because Canadians keep it free. And I'm proud to be a Canadian because Canadians make me feel proud. Recently on the East Coast, the people of Newfoundland and Labrador demonstrated in spades their ability to band together dig out of a massive snowstorm. And here at home, I want to thank my neighbors, Mr. T and Seth, for clearing my driveway on Fraser Street. <laughs> you know, some of the proudest moments of my life are seeing what Canadians have accomplished, both at home and abroad. As Minister of National Defense, I was deeply honored to do my part in supporting the men and women in uniform. And when I was able to visit them in Afghanistan and places around the world and witness firsthand what they would risk, how they would risk it all for strangers, I knew I was witnessing some of the very best of what makes Canada what it is today. I was honored to visit Canadian forces and their families where they worked, trained, fought, and gave their all. And we know that the same determination, perseverance, and sacrifice was demonstrated by generations of Canadian forces, giving us a hard-earned reputation as a generous, heroic nation. Canadians are soldiers, warriors, on ice, on sand, on forest and field. And because of it, out of an intrinsic loyalty to Canada, out of a belief that strength and compassion are core values of what makes our country great. Women and men can unite and go out into the world voluntarily, protect innocent lives from tyranny. I ask, is not our country among the greatest in the world? Our country, in fact, our entire planet, faced big challenges with big, complicated questions being asked of us all. And yet, I see a federal government shrugging and often doing more harm than good. Virtue signaling without action, drama and rhetoric when all we desperately need are dramatic results. I can't take a pass or look away when our country is at stake, while this government makes life harder for our citizens. I can't stand by and hope someone else will do the job that needs to be done. And so, I'm here to stand up with you and do my part to help unite this country, to put shoulder to the wheel, and with others, to help us build a better life for all. For Canada, of course, is a union of communities, large and small, of strong places made up of strong people who want a better lives for themselves and their families, of communities transplanted in timelines measured by centuries or days from across the world. We're made up of those who fled religious or political persecution, racial violence, sexual intolerance or exploitation, arriving here, leaving their homes and often their loved ones behind to begin a new life in Canada. For in Canada, we preserve, protect, and promote people's hard-earned rights. We never exclude Canadians or talk away their security or sense of belonging. We're spread out right across the continent. We fish in three oceans. We innovate, we plant, we produce. We supply the world with a bounty of natural resources that sustain our people. Nous créons à une meilleure protection de l'environnement, en plus de notre liberté 
et de notre démocratie. Le plus beau cadeau que nous avons reçu en tant que Canada est la splendeur naturelle de notre pays et de ses cours d'eau. We're stewards of the environment. The greatest gift that we've received as Canadians alongside our freedom and democracy is our natural splendor of land and sea. And what we have to offer is this, open arms, open heart, and an open way of life. Whether Scottish settlers or Afghan refugees, if you want a place to live and worship in freedom, where your hard work will be rewarded with the fruit of your own labor and the satisfaction of a job well done, where if you're willing to work with your neighbors, you can bind and build great communities, enjoy a better way of life. We're, we're, we're not a country that lives in isolation. I've taken part in negotiations on behalf of our country at NATO and UN tables. I know that we're part of a community of nations that believes in common ideals of shared security amongst the highest of priorities. And here among family and friends and allies, there will always be some disagreements on minor matters. We had some this morning, <laughs> like socks. <laughs> but it's truly the big ones that matter. And we all know that we're better for being part of a free world. And leadership on the world stage requires serious diplomacy. To advance Canada's interests requires authenticity of action, measured by outcomes not selfies or photo ops or dressing up or dancing. <laughs> For being part of a free world means helping people as much as it means giving people the freedom to help themselves. Les Canadiens ont et ont essayé d'une diplomatie de façade qui ne produit aucun résultat. I grew up right here in rural Nova Scotia, watching my grandfather in awe. He was a man, stoic in nature, who got things done. He paid his freight up front through blisters and bruises. He built a life for himself and for his family in Lorne, just down the road from here. He worked in sawmills, in forests, fields, and on the farm. And he believed, as Canadians do, that independence, self-sufficiency, and hard work are their own reward and a source of lifelong pride. And what he built in his time was a country where a kid like his could become a minister in the government of Canada, and where a grandson like me Thanks, Pop. <laughs> and a grandson like me would feel compelled by duty to keep building so that anyone born anywhere who works hard in this country can become anything they want to be and kill, can build any life that they want to live. Believe me, I didn't begin my career thinking I would be a politician. Anything but. I set out to fulfill the dream that my parents have for their children. I went to school, I worked hard, I pursued a career, I, I later became a lawyer and then a prosecutor. And it was my job then to work with others to protect the public and provide safe streets to uphold the law. I thank all our law enforcement, military and emergency responders with us here today. And you know, those years ago, I, I saw serious failings in what we have in our justice system. I watched as victims and survivors were often shuttled into the court, asked to have their say, and marched back out and tried to get on with their lives. Their lives were often shattered by the crimes and sometimes shattered again by the harsh experience that they had in the justice system. I saw the need for change. And later, as justice minister in the Harper government, I worked to try to bring about substantive changes to help make our communities and our country safer. I can't and I won't watch anyone do harm to our country 
and not do all that I can to put an end to it. We've all lived through the realities of what can happen when Conservatives are not united. We know firsthand how important it is that we do our part not to divide ourselves, our party, or our nation. If divided, we falter. We fail. And I've done my part, and I've played my part in uniting the Conservative family into one big blue tent. And it's hey. For all Conservatives, all Canadians belong in a party where they have a voice and a place at the table. Our strength comes from our shared values, and victory will only come if we work as one. The Conservative Party of Canada is more than a vehicle pulled together for electoral success. It's made up of dedicated Canadians, volunteers who help their communities every day, and we must be sure that the face of the nation is reflected in the face of the Conservative Party of Canada. When we unite, all for Canada, all pulling in the same direction, we can accomplish a shared dream. A Canada that is not just a great country, but a country that can become greater still, for our potential is unlimited as a nation. And if we don't unite, there is a risk to our party, but there is also a risk to our country, for democracy demands choice and competition. We are in danger of more years of Justin Trudeau, of more years of arrogant and disconnected Liberal governments making life harder for the people they say they want to help. And so I have a call to action for each and every one of you. It's the same thing that I ask of myself. Engage yourself in your community. Engage yourself in your party and your country. Canadians are calling out for a return to civil discourse, for citizen engagement rooted in respectful dialogue, free from fear of vilification for having contrary views. Unity and civility start with each and every one of us, and we'll discover that we have a lot in common. That includes our neighbour, which makes us stronger. Aujourd'hui, j'ai besoin que vous passez l'action à l'action, une action que j'ai fait également. Impliquez-vous dans vos communautés. Impliquez-vous dans la vie de notre pays. Impliquez-vous dans notre parti. Les Canadiens demandent de retourner à le dialogue respectueux, qui se traduira par un grand, plus grand engagement. Sans crainte de défamation, même si nous exprimons des opinions contraires. Pour chacune, D'être nous, l'unité et la civilité doivent faire partie de nos actions quotidiennes. Nous découvrons qu'il y a beaucoup plus d'éléments qui nous réunissent que le contraire. À mes amis du Québec, votre dynamisme économique et culturel m'inspire beaucoup. Je suis ici pour vous par parler d'espoir. L'espoir d'élire un gouvernement national qui partage vos valeurs québécoises, qui respecte vos compétences et qui est fier de la place du Québec en tant que nation au sein du Canada. Know that there are natural conservatives in every kind of family, in every community, in every corner of Canada, of every faith, in every place of work. And with your initiative, we'll listen to them to build a common vision of growth and opportunity, of a Canada that stands tall in this world. Together, we'll expand outward that big blue tent with strengthening its solid poles of conservative principle. Ensemble, on va gagner et former un gouvernement uni, fort et démocratique pour le Canada. Together, we'll win and form a united, strong and democratic government for Canada. You know, it's been proven time and time again that the only way 
that it will work. It's the only way that we'll win is together. And so together, let's empower volunteers, constituency associations like ours right across the country to shape the party. Let's empower the members of parliament to represent constituents to Ottawa, not the other way around, even when it's uncomfortable, to speak truth to power, moving mountains in the right direction and pipelines too. And friends, we've seen how the concentration of power in the PMO has interfered with justice. It's failed Canadians and has empowered only those close to the PM and his inner circle. The Liberal government has broken faith with Canadians. And let's be clear, we as a party need to earn the trust of Canadians to govern them with confidence for all. As we earn the trust to govern them with confidence and compassion, that trust will help us to make sound decisions as they pertain to Canadians' everyday lives. Together, unified, we'll get this country back on track to be that place, that bastion of hope for the world, that place where people can live in peaceful prosperity, safe from harm, prosecution, or intolerance. We can be that beacon that doesn't just call people to safe harbor, but stands strong in this world, weathering the storms, shoulder to shoulder with our allies, united against the enemies of freedom. I stand here before you today with my heart on my sleeve. For every Canadian, whoever you love, wherever you live, pour chaque Canadienne, Canadienne, où ce que vous vivez et qui que ce soit que vous aimiez. Je donne, je vous donne tout mon appui et je vous demande le votre bien humainement. Vos efforts, votre contribution et votre participation dans cette grande aventure nous mènera à un avenir plus prospère et à un Canada meilleur. I promise you my support and I humbly ask for yours. Your effort, your input, your part in this journey that will bring us to a better place, a better Canada and its place in the world. Merci. Thank you, and God bless. All right, let's hear it for the next Prime Minister of Canada, Peter McKay! My name is Scott Armstrong and I have the easiest job in Canada. I'm the chair of the Nova Scotia McKay 2020 campaign. I think we're doing okay. Now, we are filled to capacity with McKay supporters, proud Conservatives who are going to unite this country. It's our job to stand behind Peter and Nova Scotia and make sure we protect the home front as we engage in this leadership. Now, Peter wants to have the opportunity to say hi and get a picture with as many of you as he can, but we need to do this in an orderly fashion because we have hundreds and hundreds of people here today. So if you want a picture with Peter McKay, Please line up on this side of the stage, your right, my left, and we will guide you through. Please don't try to monopolize them. We need to move everyone through as quickly as possible. One more time, let's send a message to all Canada. Is Nova Scotia behind Peter McKay? Thank you all for being here. Let's do this job together. Thank you.